there are so many people out there that can help each other get back on their feet. Can, I can help them, but as I'm helping them and they get into themselves, they're helping other people as well. And I'm starting to see this now, these connections, it's like it's a spider web almost. Hello, you are listening to the Late Bloomer Living Podcast, where we are reimagining and redefining what it means to be in midlife, where we are gathering energy, momentum, and excitement for our next chapter via candid conversations with other midlifers about their own pivots, pitfalls, and triumphs. I'm Yvonne Marchese, your host, and I'm so happy you're here. Well, it's already February. Where did January go? Didn't we just celebrate the new year? (laughs) How are you doing? Uh, We've had a doozy of a couple of years, haven't we? You might find yourself, you know, you've been tiptoeing into this new year, praying that you don't set off a tripwire. And who could blame you? Oh my... We've lost a lot of good people over the past couple of years, and it's been a collective grieving process. If you're lucky and haven't lost someone near and dear to you, you're still very likely grieving the loss of normalcy. You know, all the things we took for granted before the pandemic. Now, before you turn off the podcast, because you just can't with one more conversation about the pandemic... That's not really what we're talking about today. I want to say that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, yeah, you know, that makes me think of the Leonard Cohen lyric, uh, forget your perfect offering. There is a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. My guest today knows something about the journey through grief and how to pick up the pieces and move forward. Her name is Sarah Gallagher. Her husband died when she was in her late 30s, and her son was two and a half years old. It wasn't expected, and she was devastated. He was her soulmate, and his death left her with so many unfinished plans, like plans to have another child. Redefining her life goal as a solo parent ended up giving her strength. She decided to go ahead and have the second child that they'd always dreamed of. And with time, she found herself reaching out to help other young widows. Over the years, she's turned her pain into purpose and is now offering grief coaching for other widowed solo parents. I can't wait for you to meet her. So we're just going to dive in. So without further ado, here's Sarah Gallagher. Let's go. Sarah, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for having me. It's been so long since we first talked. I'm super excited that we're we're finally doing it. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Um, I always like to say how I met people and uh, we were just going back to it's Camilla Burrell. I don't know if anybody remembers her from an earlier podcast. Um, I will put a, a link to her episode in the show notes, but it's so cool the work she's doing, interviewing people, interviewing women in their forties about life and, and all the stuff that hits you in midlife. I mean, that, once I heard what she was doing, I was like, oh my gosh, we got to talk. So man, oh man, I, your, your story just completely blows me away. So I'm going to let you take us through it to basically what's brought you, I mean, you had a, the pivot of all pivots really. Um, so tell us a little bit about that and, and how it's brought you to where you are now, you know? Uh, all right. So basically the long and the short of it is that to understand who I am, uh, I have to understand the fact that I am a, a young widow. So I am currently 44. When I was 37, my husband passed away unexpectedly. 
Uh, and I had a two and a half year old child at the point, my son, mm. and I had to deal with all the stuff that happens when you're a widow. And when you're young, you're not expecting to be a widow, obviously, you know, you're expecting to have a life with that person and have a, that you're just, you're just starting with, you just started having kids. You, this look, this is your life dream you have with them. And then all of a sudden it's cut short. And when, most of the time when you hear the idea of widow or widower, you think late, later in age. They've already had their kids. They have an empty nest syndrome. They've kind of had a wonderful life, life together at the end. But when you look at young widows, the I, what support is out there, there isn't that much from what I could tell. And when, at least when I was going through it. I felt very alone. I felt very like no one understood what I was going through because I didn't. You don't really understand how grief affects you personally until you lose your spouse because you lose yourself as well. You lose because all those dreams you had, they're gone. Yeah. So that's where I start. So to understand that, we have to understand that I'm a widow. So that was seven years ago. I have been seven, seven years a widow. About four years ago, um, I decided to start helping others as well. And this happened because uh, a, f- a friend of mine or an acquaintance of mine through Facebook, I found out that her husband was in the hospital from an un- unexpectedly having a cardiac arrest, which is exactly what my husband had gone through. Yeah. And at that point, I knew I had to reach out to her because she was going through the same limbo of not knowing whether he was uh, brain dead or not mm-hmm. and in the hospital. So I figured I have to reach out to her. And I did. And I helped her through for the first six months um, when no one else could. And she's been extremely grateful about that. But at the same time, I had two or three other friends at the same time who also lost their colleagues, their their husbands. Oh so God. it was all of a sudden like, oh, my God, like this is I'm not just the only widow here. Like this is more prevalent than I realized it was. And that's why I realized I had to start reaching out to other people. Um, so that's I so about I started my business loosely well I started counseling or coaching about three or four years ago loosely I started my website blog back in December of 2019 so January 2020 and then six months later I'm like I have to do more I have to reach out more and that's when I started to actually go pushing into the coaching be one-on-one with people Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that's what I've been doing ever since and I just recently have pivoted so in June i was laid off my job where I was there for 13 years as mm-hmm. a project manager. And I saw that as an opportunity, the universe saying, Hey, like you need to take this opportunity. Yeah. You have a severance package. You can, you're, you're safe for a bit to go out and help the people you have to help. Um, so I focus mainly on widow, young, young widows or widowers with young kids, because again, my, my son was two and a half when my husband passed. And then a year after uh, he died, I decided that I was going to go forward and have this, the second kid that we always wanted on my own. So I used that as my going forward into life. And now I have two wonderful kids, one of them who's five and she's a little spitfire and she's fantastic. And my older son is the most empathetic person you'd ever meet. And part of that is probably because he is a griever too. Um, and this is where I am. So I can say if I've gone through this with my two young kids, you know, having like an hour to myself, a day just trying right. to grieve and I've gotten through it. You can too. Yeah. I can't tell you. I, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about um, a very close friend of mine who, whose husband passed away at about the same, same age uh, as, as you were a uh, very unexpectedly cardiac event as well. Um, and then another, I mean, and then I start to think about I, like really a handful of friends who, who have been, who have been widowed, um, male and female, uh, early, earlier than, than you think it should be. Right. Mm -hmm. And you, it's just, I think about it and just like my heart seizes up thinking about that possibility. It's crazy. Well, you absolutely. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I actually formed the group as well, because unless you've, if you haven't gone through it, if you're not a mourner, if you're not a griever, then trying to deal with somebody else's grief can be very emotionally destructive to you. So a lot of people who are not mourners, they tend to kind of shy away from helping people who are grieving because it's just such a heavy thing to deal with. No one ever wants to be a mourner. And, no and there's ever like, a griever, right? and, and then you're like, as somebody on the outside, you're like, I, I don't even know what to do. Exactly. What do you, what do, you do? Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I also, so one of the things I've been doing is, is I'm trying to help 
the people I, I work with, I just, I, it's not just about venting and it's not just about getting the grief out. But that they're allowed to obviously like feel free, but it's also the way of going forward. And here are some steps to actionable steps to go forward. And I also have resources to help them talk to their friends and their family who are trying to reach out and trying to help, but they don't know how to, mm-hmm. and they don't know what to tell them because they don't know what they need. So I've been able to put some resources together to say, here, this is what you should do to help your friend. This is what you should do to help other people. Uh, So it's more, it's just, it's more creating more of a community, not just for my widow friends or my widow colleagues, but to help them reach out to the friends and family that they have to get the community back that they need. It's amazing to me that you've taken something, first of all, with the, with the death of your husband, you've taken that and turned it into a service. The, the, how, I guess my, my question, my first question that pops into my mind around that is what is that, what, have, what, is, what has that done for you? What have you found out about yourself through the process of taking <laughs> oh. that experience and turning it into helping other people? I have realized that it's been really, it's become really my life, my life purpose now. Um, it's working for a corporate company for as long as I have and working in publishing, which is, was my love, was where I thought I was going to be. Mm-hmm. And I felt that after some time, after I went there, again, I was there for 13 years. So I guess 10 years into it and nothing, everything just seemed to not want to do, go any further. They're always like, it was stagnant. And I was like, what else am I mm-hmm. going to do with myself? I got to stay here mm-hmm. and keep doing this. Mm-hmm. So when this called to me and I realized that I can help other people, that I can do great work of actually making real differences and real change in the world it's it's incredible it's it's just it lifts me up is to help me discover myself too because the more i push into what i know can help people the more vulnerable i am the more i lean into me and trust myself and which is scary yeah. the more i connect with other people and the more they feel they can come out and connect too and that is wonderful seeing working with these widows and seeing them go from being very shy and not knowing what to say because all their whole entire time of be grieving, people don't want to hear. People don't want to listen because it's too tough. And then, but if I can go, hey, I understand. And that, so said, there's this almost this recognition, this light in their eyes when they realize they can talk, when they realize that they can share an experience and they understand and realizing that they are not going crazy, that this is completely normal for everybody to go through, Mm -hmm. that they're not the only widow in the world, you know, and that we're all here together. That's, that's incredible to me. And it's a lifelong, it's a process. I'm learning new things about myself all the time. I'm learning more about the fact that I am all what my children need. You know, mm-hmm. I have, I mean, I can, I have other relationships. I have other connections with people and they have other friendships, but I went from being just being a widow to being so much more. And that's what I'd like to be able to give back to other people. Yeah. I imagine there must be, I imagine in the beginning for you, there was that concern of how do I be mom and dad? Yeah. Well, there still is. There yeah. still is. I mean, it, it is. Um, I have I have a new boyfriend now for the first time in well, since my husband passed was seven years ago. Wow. And you can see the differences like there was the before and the after and even how they react to having another male in the house, another peer in the house is different. And it makes me look back to how it was just with me. And you do, you're trying to play both roles all the time. Right. But, yeah. and it confuses the kids and the kids don't know what's going on, but you're trying your best. Right. I mean, yeah. that's all you can really do. Yeah. It's all you can ever do. I, I, I you know, I, I hear it often and I, and I heard it just this morning and it just strikes me as, as so timely that, um, that you and I are having this conversation right now, but the whole idea of taking your weakness or your pain and being able to turn that around to help other people, what power there is in that. Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Man, oh man. I'm getting all the clumped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good grief. What, so, so it started small. You started with a, one particular person who needed some help that you related to. And then 
so odd that you, you know, all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, this is happening to this person and that person. And yes. At what point did it start to turn from, um, you reaching out to some people because, because you felt it was the right thing to do to you starting to think that of, about doing something more formalized, a, a little more organized, uh, going out and seeking and finding those people. What was that process like for you? I still am very much a project manager. So I like having things planned out, you know, we start date, stop date. This is your budget. This is what the schedule is. These are the processes and the systems. So I made a goal of myself and figured 2021, that's going to be my year. That's when I'm going to start doing this full time, or I'm going to try to make this my, my thing. Uh, so it started with me going through a coaching program myself of having someone coach me through figuring out what was inside me to get out. Mm. Um, and she helped me d- develop the program that I have now. She, it's, just, it's, just, it's a, it's a three month program. There are three different pillars. There's different, like different stages and everything, but she helped me define that for myself. And that helped me understand how I can help other people. And that gave me the confidence that I have that blueprint that now I can go forward. So I started a Facebook group um, and in Oh, so right before I got laid off. So in May, I had something like 67 people. I now have over 850. Wow. It's exploded. And it's, I get like another 100 every week, which just shows me how wow. much this is needed. It just yeah. shows me like, again, let me say, you're not alone. Seriously, every single body, like 100 widows and widowers, young widowers who are looking for help. So there is a desperate need there. And that's when I'm like, okay, well, what, what can we do? Like, how can we make this, how can we make this work? So yeah. it's become, because there's a need out there and because the more, again, the more I lean into myself and the more I lean into and listen to what they need, mm-hmm. the more I realize that, yeah, I have exactly what they need to help them get through and without them even knowing it. Wow. Where did you find that support when you were in the middle of, going through your own journey? I didn't. Um, Mm -hmm. That's one of the main reasons why I want there to be there for people because I didn't have that support. Um, The first, the first year of my life, or sorry, my first year of my new life. New life, uh, right? Seriously, it's almost like like a restart, right? It is a restart. Yeah, like you have to go through all their stuff. You got to get rid of all of that. You got to figure out how we're going to live. I got to figure out how how am I going to pay rent? Friends are there for a bit uh, for the first couple of months. And then they just have to go back to their own lives. They have their own lives. They have their own husbands and wives and kids and whatever. And they have to go back to that because that's busy work. Yeah. And you're stuck and you're doing your own busy work. All through that first year, I was still going through the head, my head of, okay, well, what do I do this? Do I have that second kid on my own? Because that's, that's scary. Am I going to be enough? You know, is that, is that going to even work? And I did. Uh, I got, I went to a clinic, got a, I got a donor uh, and I got inseminated and I was pregnant the first time. And that really wow. what showed me the fact that there is something bigger out there that's kind of keeping out an eye out for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what you call it, God, I, it was a higher being, but just tapping into that, feeling that comfort and feeling that, that need to go forward. And honestly, part of it was actually me feeling, feeling into my husband as well and knowing what he would want me to do. So it's all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, because I know, and I've done this all myself, I've, I've done help my kids go through their own thing. I've helped other people. I know what it is to be alone, which is why I don't want anybody else to have to do that on her own. I want somebody with that helping hand to help them through because I know what, what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, to, to turn it into the program that you've got, the, the, uh, the more I talk to people on, on this podcast, the more I realize how important it is for people to get coaching, mm. you know, um, Interesting. it seems like to be really a running theme with people is, is the idea of that, that, that at some point they needed to reach out and get some coaching. Um, and, and, uh, you know, so you may have not have done that in the beginning with your grief process, but then further on down the line in looking at how to, how to, how to provide more service for more people and to, to yeah. turn this into something codified, that's where you, that's where you needed that training, right. Or that, that extra, yep. that extra bump. 
We all need help at some point, right? Is it hard for you to ask for help? Are you, are you somebody who finds it? (laughs) I'm getting that sense. (laughs) No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Yes. And I, and I get that too. Cause like, cause you are struggling, everybody's struggling, but everybody's trying to do things on their own. And I find that even right when I'm raising my hand, <laughs> hello, I just want to say you're not alone. I'm there too. <laughs> so the idea, like, it's almost like if you want, if you're asking for help, it means you're failing in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're not, you know, you're just realizing your limitations and realize that you have to grow. And if you have to grow by helping somebody helping you by coaching you or by helping you find what the next steps are there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing you're not a failure if anything you're being vulnerable and you're opening yourself up to knowing that you need to get that extra push that you can't do it all on your own right and then that enables you to do the whole pay it forward thing right yes you get help and then you can give help yes right Amazing. yes huh. well i think that's part of it the reason i again what the philosophy behind this too, because I, there are two main objections I hear when people, I ask people what's stopping them from going forward and figuring out what they want to do next. Um, and one of them comes up is the idea that they want, they're missing their companion. They're missing that their person, which yeah. I totally get, but to jump into a situation with a new person when you haven't figured out yourself yet and what your new identity is, it's not, it's doing you a disservice because you're just half a person at that point. You haven't figured out what your new identity is. Mm -hmm. The second objection that comes up a lot is the idea that, oh, I can't do that right now. I have to make sure that my kids are okay. I have to make sure my help my kids go through my grief. I'm not important. They are. And I keep Such going trap, back to that. Right? It's a trap because I'm like, yeah. okay, oxygen mask. If you're in an airplane, yep. you put that on yourself. There's a reason that that's a, what a, a, a stereo, not a stereotype, but a cliche, right? There's a, a cliche, reason it's, it's a cliche because it's true. You got it. Very. It's not selfish. You have to have support for yourself before you can go out and, and support somebody else. Just- I, I like to see, see this idea of, um, you need to know how to stand on your own two feet before you can help your kids up. Yeah. Because, and they model you too. If they're seeing you and they're seeing you trying to figure out yourself and going forward, then they're going to go, okay, mom, I can do this. You know, if they can uh-huh. see you crying, they're going to go, okay, it's okay for me to be crying. If yeah. you see, if they see you working on trying to be your best self and being okay with asking for help and being okay with not knowing all the answers, then they're going to be more trusting and vulnerable to you too. Because that gives them faith that you will always be there, yeah. no matter what. And it also gives them faith in themselves that yeah. you can do what they can do. But yeah. Wow. 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 What, what do you wish you'd known when you headed down this path? Is there anything that you wish you'd known? Oh, I wish I had known not to doubt myself. Um, I am finally, finally getting into a mindset now where I'm allowing myself to be able to grow, to be allow myself to know that I can be the most vibrant person ever, that I am allowed to have the best life ever, have my kids have the best life ever. I'm finally getting into that. And that's taken years, years of self-doubt. And even when I started doing this, I've been trying to work on this. And so I wish I knew even like 10, seven years ago, but seven years ago, after like when the first started, I wish I had something in my head back there, whispering in my ear saying, you're okay, you're right, you're gonna be fantastic, you're gonna thrive. I yeah. wish I had that and that's yeah. what, yeah. And, I, and that, that's making me think of, you know, here you are seven years on and you were, you were young at the time, um, but what, wait, 37? Was 37, 37, 36. I was forget. I was, I'm 44 now. It's been seven years so. going. If you were to go back and look at this a little bit further, I'm just curious. Mm. You were in publishing. You, were you happy there? Did you feel like there was something missing? Did you, did you feel like you had something more to give or were, that was it? You, you were in your career, you were happily going along that path and then pff, hard stop. It was, no, it was definitely more, it wasn't a hard stop. So publishing was my love. It was my love. My books in general have been mm-hmm. my love since I was a kid. I went to school for for publishing very specifically. I worked in bookstores. I tried my best to get into publishing. Um, how I got into publishing was I got 
uh, a contract job taking over somebody's maternity leave, which turned into a full-time position. So I put, mm-hmm. took a risk there because it was so very important to me. And I was dedicated to it. And I really was putting all my effort into it. But again, after five, after 10 years of it, I'm like, is this this? Is this, is this, is this all there is? Is there mm-hmm. not more? Like, I, how come I'm not getting the level of satisfaction out of this? than I thought I would, or I did before, what's different. And that was when, coincidentally, when I actually was pregnant with my, with my daughter. So I um, wanted to let Matt leave and I started to, start, to start thinking about, okay, what else do I want to do with my life? And I started thinking about, okay, maybe I want to go back into music again. Cause I went to musical theater when I was a kid. I'm like, maybe I want to like help with kids and you'll know, do like, you know, the baby dance thing and do that. You know, well, that, that doesn't feel right. Let's try this. Let's try that. So I was already kind of exploring different ideas yeah. of what is fitting with me now, because this, what I am doing right now, isn't nearly as satisfactory and not giving me any kind of motivation. And I could see that that disengagement becoming more um, active. I'm not sure how to exactly say this. I became more intentionally disengaged from my my day job. I became more into seeking something else. What else is important for me? Ooh, what did you do to? So, so I'm curious about how did you go into that journey for yourself? Like you, you did, you purposely disengaged from what the attachment to the job. Um, what did you do? What did, what did you do to to tap into? Okay, what's right for me to do? Or was it just meeting somebody, figuring out they needed help? helping the next person, helping the next person. And that led you to kind where you are? Of. It did and it didn't. So I first, when I first started, it, this is was just going to be a blog. I was just going to have a blog page. I was, it's we're just going to talk about being a solo parent and being a widow and it's my daily life. And if I explain my life, then maybe someone will get, get it, you know? just passively telling my story. So I started, okay, I'm like, I'll communicate and I'll have connect with people with other grievers, other widowers with my words, with my written words. And then it wasn't, I guess, I guess six months later, I started talking to someone who was a coach herself and she was telling me what she was doing. I had no idea what a coach was at this point. I had no idea, never heard, heard of the idea. Yeah. Um, but it's, it amazes me now that how prevalent they are and it's become really a, this thing but mm-hmm. there's so so much secrecy like what is this what is, it's not counseling it's not therapy it's coaching it's completely different what's different which I have a whole entire new thing of why is it different and everything right but I started working with her and and I started rem- remembering how I was helping other people like one-on-one with them but I never really saw that as anything more than just you know putting a helping hand out there I never yeah. saw anything from it but then talk, after talking to this woman who's a coach, I'm like, you know what? I don't want to just be passively here and for people to need me. I have to reach out. I have to reach out because this group of, of people are so lost. They're so, they, don't, they don't know how to trust anything. Their best person, their best friend has just passed. Their friends can't connect with them anymore. They've just lost everything they can. The last thing they're going to do is go running out for help when they're trying to get their shit to it together. Right. So I have to be there to be loud and in their face and to say, hey, if you need help, this is who I am. This is how I can help. And I have to show up for them. I am terrified every single time I show up. I am terrified every single time I do a live or I do mm. a podcast video like mm. this because it exposes me. But mm-hmm. the more vulnerable I am, the oh more God, no, I, know. I have to be there for them. Yes. They need help for me and that's when I just the more and again the more I lean into that the more I'm realizing that there are so many people out there that can help each other get back on their feet can I can help them but as I helping them and they get into themselves they're helping other people as well and I'm starting to see this now these connections it's like it's a spider web almost and you need that people need that and these it takes a village take care of a child it takes a freaking world to help us like everybody together, you know, and I so I kind of go back a little bit because I'm talking about tapping into this. COVID is one of the factors I bring into this too, because, well, besides the fact that there's so many more grievers and mourners now than they were a, a year ago because of mm. COVID, because of all the deaths that happened. Mm. But there's also, I want to be an almost a parallel because we like a, a, a life before COVID, 
right? And we grieve the life we used to have. Yeah. We grieve that how, how things have changed so much since it was like when it, like a year, eight, a year and a half ago. We have to deal with the fact that we are saying that like, we have to live with the idea that there is death and there is a morbidity and there, there was the life we cannot have anymore. It was things have ch- changed. And that's exactly what a widow goes through. This is the life they used to have. This is how we've had to change. And you might mourn that old life just as you're mourning, like whether it be like your husband or whether it be the fact that now you can't go outside with a mask because you're terrified. Yes. This is a completely different way of life. And yeah, it's I'm a collective hoping. grieving going on, it right? Is. And yes. we're all experiencing this loss of what, I'm going to put it in quotes, normal, right? Yep. Of yep. what our expectations are of what our life is supposed to be. Yes, Right. So sorry, yes. I jumped in on you, but no, 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 absolutely. But that's, that's it. Right. I mean, that's exactly it. You have those perce- perceptions of what you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to be. And when all of a sudden life changes and you at your four days decide you want to do a brand new career, you know, which is scary in itself. It's a new life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. If you decide that um, you've just everything, everybody is going through this together. Um, and the point of all this is the idea that we can all help each other. Like I can help those widows figure out where to go, what their next steps are, and then they can help other people. And, but I'm also helping my grievers, friends and families to help. This is how you can connect to them. This is how you can help them. This is what they need you to know that they can't tell you. Um, and that just brings us together, all of us. And this is not just me on this earth. This is me and you and you and you, and we're all organically going to figure this out eventually, you know, that we're all connected. Yeah. And doing this kind of thing, doing this service just gives back. And the more that we put into it, the more we feel relieved and of service because that's really what we're here to do. Mm-hmm. We're here to not be individual be- beings, but to help connect other people. Yeah. Sorry, that got really philosophical there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, lo- I love it. I love digging into that stuff. I mean, and it, it's just the confidence that you gain from stepping into doing something that's outside yourself too, mm, you know, yes. it, it is incredible. Like, uh, I, I feel like I've grown so much since I took this particular thing on and it, it's just, um, my confidence level has, has skyrocketed from doing something that, like you said, you're so terrified every time you step up to bat per se. Right. Yeah. Right. You got to get on camera. You got to get, get on a call with somebody you got to, and, and every single time, but every time you do that, you're working a muscle right? Yeah. And, yeah. and getting stronger. Amazing. It ah, is. Man, oh man, I'm, I'm in such admiration of what you're doing and your journey. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness. What are you excited about that's coming up? Um, that's a very good question. So I have a my signature program, which is Reclaim Your Life, which is, as I mentioned, it's a three month program. Uh, it helps it, it, everybody's journey is different, right? Everybody's grief is unique. Everybody's own path forward is unique. And I can't tell anybody what that is, but I do know all the different things that you have to go through, all the different self-identity things you have to do in order to find that. And that's what my skill is. My skill is to figure out where inside you is that but person, where is inside you is that identity and your life journey and help draw that out of you. And that's what the three months program is. Sometimes it takes less, sometimes it takes more. It really depends again on the individual. Right, so that's yeah. my signature program. And it's, it's beautiful. Again, watching these people transform, but I'm excited. You give them because- milestones to yes. look for. So even if they go past the three months, let's say their timeline is different. They yes. at least have this sense of, okay, oh, this is where I'm at. This is what she was talking about. I wasn't there then, but I'm there now. Yes. And there's Uh no, I can't say it's going to take this much time for this much person or this stage is going to be X number of time or how many things you have to do. Because sometimes you might go forward one step and then back a couple more steps because you have to figure out yourself again, Uh, right? Discovering (laughs) this life. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So that's, it's, that's what, but what's, what I'm excited about now is that, so I have this, which is 
obviously available. There is, I do one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching as well, just as a, like an ad hoc kind of thing if you need it. But I'm excited because the more I'm listening to my people, the more I realize that it's not just them that they're worried about. It's not just them they have to work on. They are a mother or a father and they have to help their kid too. So I'm excited because I'm going to be adding onto my program a, 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 a bonus mo module about how to help your kids grieve. Um, basically, mm -hmm. the, depending on what age they are, figure this is the typical signs of what they go through. This is how you can help and have that as a resource to help them get through. And if wow. that's if that's available, I also also thinking about doing a an art therapy course with the kids, with the whole family, because that's what I've been doing with my own kids and helping them get through that way. Help. So being there with their kid and working with something together so they're kids don't really talk about their grief or talk about their big feelings because they're big feelings and they can't even express them, especially if they're younger. Mm -hmm. um, when they're older, they tend to get more angry and get just distance themselves because that's how they deal with things. And there's another deal with that. But for the younger kids, up to 10, I have a program, I'm working on a program now where we actually work with the kids through their grief, through different art play. And we'll, as they express nice. their art and they express what they are, you get to see what they're feeling and how they're, how they're interacting with things in a way that you couldn't have got them through their voice. And this works even with younger kids, like even toddlers who have the emotional and they have the, the capacity to understand all the different emotions, but they don't have the language behind mm -hmm. it to say what's going on. This supplement to the course is to be able to help the parents help their kids at the same time as they're helping themselves. And I don't oh. want to set, I don't want to sell it as a separate thing because I don't want pe the parents just to go, okay, just give me that for my kids and I'll be fine. Because that's not the point. The point is mm -hmm. you are important, mm -hmm. but here, how I can help your kids at the same time. It's a uh, whole package. This is not I love just... the way you've thought this through. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Cause that, cause that is very likely what a person would do. It's, you know, is I'm not important. Let me take care of my kids first. Again, yes. going back to that. Right. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Very thoughtful. What's the best way for people to connect with you? And I'll, I'll have a lot of the things that we've mentioned in the show notes and everything else. There are two main reasons, uh, two main ways. The, the first is to join my Facebook group. It's called widowed solo parenting. You're not mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's if you just even search for widow, it's one of the first things that will come up in Facebook groups now uh, because mm -hmm. we have uh, that much engagement and wow. that many meet people. Mm -hmm. uh, the other way you can get a hold of me is that you can uh, go on my website. It's www.thedaysarefull.com. There's that's all of my all the different resources for my blogs about how to help you figure out. Uh, how just different things. I mean, it's, it's chock full of resources and I'm trying to, I haven't been as active on it as I have been, but there's also links there to how to get a hold of me directly or how to get to my Facebook group. So those are the two main reasons, two main resources that I can give you. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I'm so glad that after all the time that it took us to, to actually make this happen, I'm, I'm glad we finally got it together. Thank you. I, I really it. appreciate the chance to be able to do this. People need to hear this. People are, there are people out there who need to hear this exact thing. And if you're one of those people and you're things twinging, do get in touch with me because you know yeah. something's important. Yeah, the work you're doing is, is so important, so great. Just really, really happy to have had you here today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you have it. I'm so inspired by Sarah's ability to take her experience with grief and turn it into a service to help others. Here's the thing, we've all been through something by the time we get to midlife. That's the wisdom that comes with age. You can't ask for that. It's given freely. <laughs> and along with it comes an opportunity to transform our painful experiences so we can be a wayfinder for someone else. And you don't need to be an expert. You just need to be a step ahead in the journey and reach out your hand to the person behind you. And that doesn't have to be through any kind of formal coaching program. It's just something to think about, you know? Do you know anyone who's grieving from what's been happening over the past couple of years? Um, anyone who might need support from someone who's been there? You can find more information about Sarah Gallagher's Facebook group for widowed solo parents in the show notes, along with other links to find out more about her programs. You can just go to latebloomerliving.com forward slash podcast and click on the show notes for episode 83. 
And hey, before you go, I want to tell you about a guide I created for you designed to help you start taking the steps towards your next act. It's a workbook called Five Steps to Your Midlife Reboot. It comes as an email series and it has some ideas and practical exercises that you can use over the course of several weeks to get past that stuck feeling. You can do these at your own pace as they'll be waiting for you in your inbox when you're ready for the next step. And you can find a link to sign up for that free guide in the show notes also. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a fantastic week. Stay safe and well. Talk soon.